I'll admit that looking for the silver lining of all the Christian movies we've watched is a lot like digging through the mountains of Triceratops shit to find the lilac berries, but if I had to justify the time with something other than a good excuse to get Eli on the show, I'd approach it from a know thy enemy perspective. And before anybody balks at that and sends me a, you know, Christians aren't our enemies email, let me clarify, because the religious people that write this shit aren't the enemies I'm talking about. But one of the biggest obstacles the atheist movement is trying to overcome is the bullshit stereotype of us that Christians have done such a good job of reinforcing. And the screenwriters for this crap give me an unrivaled glimpse of exactly who they think we are, or, if you want to be a little bit more cynical, who they want their audiences to think we are. And honestly, this concept of the God-spurned atheist is probably the most ubiquitous cliché in all of Christian cinema. In virtually every movie we've watched, if there's an atheist character, he or she got there via cancer or a dead baby. You know, and I only say virtually because in International Guerrillas, it was because the atheist wanted to drink the blood of Muslim children in his casino come disco, and in See Me Dance, they didn't bother with shit like reasons. But with those two exceptions... Everyone in every Christian movie that we've seen that doesn't believe in God, A, started off as a believer, and B, gave up on God when he cancered somebody to death. Now, don't get me wrong. That's a really good reason to give up on the notion of God. You know, horrible shit happening to good people is probably the single greatest argument against their basic precept. But I've heard the deconversion stories of scores of former believers, and never once have I heard about somebody giving up on God in the doldrums of a cancer-induced depression. Instead, I hear about people listening to an online debate, or losing an argument, or reading a book, often the Bible. And yet, not once in a Christian movie have I ever seen an atheist who decided not to believe in God because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Instead, they create these elaborate stories of heartbroken abandon at the feet of an unanswered prayer. And if you think about it, that's ultimately a lot more damning since they can't actually explain why God kills innocent people's innocent babies with cancer during the movie. So voluntarily introducing it actually works against you if your goal is to reinforce a belief in God. What's more, they could just as easily avoid this fatal flaw in their worldview by writing an atheist character that just read books. I mean, doesn't that fit right into their arrogantly second-guessing God on account of them college thinkings narrative? So it would make sense to use that, at least occasionally. But even in God's Not Dead, where the evil atheist actually is a college professor, the writers feel the need to explain away his atheism with a cancer-stricken mother. Now, think about this. If their goal was simply to explain the existence of an atheist in such a way that they could fix by the end of the movie, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to give them purely intellectual reasons to doubt, and then you, you know, toss in a miracle at the end to shatter their materialistic worldview. And yet, every single one of these writers decides to introduce the problem of evil into their script with no chance of reconciling it. So let's step back for a second and ask why. You know, why do they cling to this jilted-by-Jesus version of the atheist like a 12-year-old boy holding his first tit? Well, to answer that question, we have to consider what purpose the atheist in the Christian movie is serving. And by and large, they're not actually there to represent atheists. More often, they exist in the script to personify the doubt of the Christian who's watching the movie. And why does the Christian doubt? Well, it's obviously not because they read books and watched debates and delved deeply into the counter-apologetics, because if that was the case, they wouldn't be Christians anymore. More often, the seed of doubt gestating in the Christian brain is the problem of evil. That one's unavoidable. You know, they've been trying to puzzle this shit out since Job, and they still haven't come up with a valid excuse. And this makes perfect sense if you think about how these fictional atheists find God by the end of the movie, and they always do. Again, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to just write in a miracle. You know, I mean, when you're writing a script, there's actually an omnipotent presence. So you could just have an angel part the fucking skies and tell the atheist he was wrong if they had the budget for it. But instead, the atheist always forgives God and accepts Jesus for purely emotional reasons. Usually fear. Right? They don't actually attempt to harmonize their contradictory worldview, they just run over the atheist with a car so that he can succumb to the fear of the unknown and hedge his bets quick before he dies. But of course, that's only part of the answer. The other part is that they need to paint the world of the atheist as a miserable one marred by cancer and dead kids. After all, if they didn't portray us as being unhappy, we would just be the only people in the movie they get to masturbate guilt-free. So much like the ridiculous image of the miserly old rich person burdened by all the unhappiness that comes with limitless wealth, this bullshit fabrication allows the Christian to walk away from the movie saying, yeah, them atheists might look like they're having fun with all that fornicating and sleeping in on Sundays, but deep down they're just disguising their dead cancer baby misery. And of course, the more counterexamples Christians come across in their day-to-day -day life, the more of these fictional caricatures they need to create in order to balance it out. So the next time you're thinking about holding your tongue, 
right? The next time you're in one of these social circumstances where the correct answer is I'm an atheist, but the easy answer is, uh, how about them Yankees, huh? Consider that the very faith of the people that you're talking to might be contingent on the notion that all atheists are miserable people with dead cancer babies. Consider that you might be the only counterbalance in their life to Kevin Sorbo. Or, if nothing else, just consider that the more happy atheists they meet, the more of these stupid fucking movies they're going to have to make. After all, an excuse to get Eli on the show more often should be the only excuse you need.